For those who love Asia, Sri Lanka is one of the nicest places on earth. Its population of 18 million includes Tamils, Muslims and a majority of Sinhalese. The island has been compared to the Garden of Eden since ancient times. Earlier known as Ceylon, it has always held conquerors, explorers and travellers under its spell. The world loved to come to Sri Lanka. This is why it didn't look away as the huge waves hit. It was in December 2004. Tsunami devastated large areas of the Sri Lankan coast. Disputes over aid money have since left the island deeply divided. Today, the world has turned away from Sri Lanka. Tourists aren't coming back and civil war has returned, tearing the country apart. So for the last uh, 30, uh, nearly 30 years, we have been uh, fighting the two here in the country. Two parties have been fighting. But I, uh, also I have seen, um, even from 1983, how the uh, ordinary people suffered from the w fighting, the war. Uh, I don't think anywhere in the world, in the history, uh, there had been uh, 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 sort of winner or loser in, the, in a war. The past weeks have seen conflict flaring up once again, starting from where it always starts, on the northern Jaffna Peninsula. It's a Tamil territory ruled by Liberation Tigers. They wage a bitter war against Sri Lankan troops. The rebels want to regain this area for good. Fights have also taken a tragic turn, with both sides ignoring damage done to the civilian populations and using innocent victims for propaganda purposes. Tamil Tigers have been fighting for independence in the north and east of the country since the 70s. Their struggle developed into full-fledged civil war in 1983. Over two decades, until a ceasefire was agreed upon four years ago, this war killed more than 65,000 people. Many humanitarian organisations, which helped with the reconstruction efforts after the tsunami, are now busy protecting domestic refugees. Food and water supplies in Jaffna have dwindled because the roads now closed cross rebel territory. We are lacking basic food. We only get tiny portions of sugar and cereal. Prices are three times what they used to be, and there's practically no petrol left. Parents can't feed their children anymore. The situation is dramatic. Tamil and Sinhalese politicians are serious about achieving a peace agreement, though on the ground there is little sign of this. I really think it's important for the international community to realise that uh, the key to breaking this cycle of violence will be to somehow impress upon this government uh, that a military option is no, not available that it cannot be acceptable to the international community and uh, that the only way forward is through negotiations. And we believe that uh, all the resources and all the leverage that the international community has vis-a-vis -vis the Sri Lankan state must be used in order to send that message across. Tamils have found a tough political adversary in Sinhalese President Rajapaksa. He wants to preserve the unity of the state and rejects the Tamil demands for decentralisation. This position secures him the votes of the Sinhalese nationalist faction. By cutting off drinking water supplies in the north, Tamil rebels have triggered a new round of violence. Tens of thousands, mostly Sinhalese, had no access to drinking water for days. The army retaliated with bombs before marching in with 3,000 men. The military escalation reached a sad culminating point with the deaths of 61 Tamil pupils in the bombings. Only days later, 17 locals working for a French AIDS organisation were executed, shot through the head. Except for one, they were all Tamils. Until now, no one has dared to admit this taboo breach. 
politicians fear that reluctance to start a new civil war seems to have vanished on both sides. A lot of uh, suspicion has built in over the years and we, I think, have reached a point where we are refusing to trust each other. Whatever one party says, the other is unable to trust. And I think this situation has aggravated the conflict and we are virtually on the doorstep of war. Weapons and not diplomacy have long had the last word here, which is why few hold high hopes for the Norwegian-led peace talks in Geneva this month. However, the fate of thousands of Sri Lankans is resting on its success.